Roseman just send a message across the NFL and it was this. You won't even see me coming. Dallas still stinks. Yo, by the way, King Dick back here and hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. We are less than two weeks from training camp, and I can't contain myself. I'm busting. I am, because in less than two weeks, we are going to see the continuation of the golden era of Eagles football. And as an Eagle fan, how can you not love that? And all eyes are going to be on Philly, because Howie Roseman, the little guy, has got plans. He's basically put the NFL on notice. He told them, you won't even see me coming. And they won't. Now, before we get into all of this and more, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, the most throttled, pause. Eagles content creator in all of the internet. And if you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to thank you so much for all the support you give to me. Now, football is going to start. And when it starts, it's always a fury. We're going to be doing a lot of things, a lot of streaming, a lot of different games this year. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you guys don't miss out on anything. Um, now, in this video, there's a few things I want to talk about. Um, and uh, you know what? I'm not going to talk about the Cowboys today. I'm not going to talk about Mark Holmes. You don't want to hear me address Mark Holmes again after I've I finally caught him uh, screwing up. He screwed the pooch today big time. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. So let's talk about Dallas Goddard, right? Now, Dallas Goddard, okay, you do want to hear it. You do. You do. You want to hear it. Well, I'll, I'll keep it simple. I'll keep it simple. I've asked the guy one question. Mark, when are you going to hold the Dallas, when are you going to hold Dak Prescott responsible or accountable for the playoff losses? How many more playoff losses does he get before you have to look at him? He will refuse. He refuses to answer the question. He refuses to answer the question. Uh, and he does that on purpose, by the way. Well, today he screwed up. He screwed the pooch because today he released a video. And the title of the video is this. Dak Prescott's, quote, sense of urgency, why it's crap. Now, when I saw that and I began to watch the video, it was exactly what you thought it would be. That Dak doesn't have a sense of urgency. It's everybody else's fault, blah, 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 blah. And I said to myself, finally got the answer to my question. I finally got it. When will Mark Holmes... Hold Dak Prescott accountable for his playoff losses? Never. Never. How can you say a guy should have a sense of urgency when you can't even hold them accountable? They will never hold Dak Prescott accountable. And that's the answer I was looking for. It's the answer I wanted. Keep the guy forever. Sign him to another extension. Keep doing it because obviously uh, you, you, you're, you're winning so many titles with him. Keep doing it. I love it, but thank you for Mark. Thank you for answering the question you didn't realize you were answering. Now we know Mark Holmes, the the king, the president of the Dak Prescott fan club. It's no doubt about it. No question. I've never seen such a bond of a man to a man than Mark Holmes and Dak Prescott. It's unbelievable. Now I want to talk a little bit about Dallas Goddard because Dallas Goddard was on. Part in the interruption, no, it's part in the take, I'm sorry, part in this, part in that, to shove it up, you, you know why. But, you know, he was on that show, uh, part of my take, and he said a few things I thought were kind of interesting. First thing, he was ranking his quarterbacks, and he was saying basically where he put Jalen Hurts. And he said this, personally speaking, Jalen is in the top two, and he's not number two. So he's saying Jalen Hurts, in his mind, is the best quarterback in the league. Now, here's the thing. I believe Dallas Goddard believes it 100%. There is no reason why he wouldn't. If your quarterback on your team is in the top five, then you're going to think he's number one. That's just natural. Unless you're Justin Jefferson, then you, then you leave your quarterback out, which Kirk Cousins isn't a top ten quarterback anyways. But if you're a player on the team, you got to lie. you got to lie. you got to put him in, in, in the top five. you got to. Just you, you can't do it. I can't believe Jefferson didn't do it, but it is what it is. Now, Goddard said he's... He's number one. I, I'll be honest with you. If, if I was ranking quarterbacks, uh, I would have Hurts probably three. That's where I would put him. I have Mahomes, Burrow, and then I have Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts tied at three. That's where I would have it. Now, I think Jalen Hurts is trending up. I think Josh Allen stabilized 
around four. Uh, that's kind of where I think. And you might say, well, well, Josh Allen hasn't won anything. He hasn't even taken his team to the Super Bowl. I feel like that playoff game a few years ago with the Kansas City Chiefs, that showed me enough. That showed me that kid could win the big games. He can put his team on his back and carry them, unlike Dak. So, to me, I, I think that Dallas Goddard is being honest when he says he thinks he's the best quarterback uh, in the league. And, and, and I agree with him. I, I agree with him. Uh, he's at least top three, definitely. Uh, but Dov Kleeman, uh, he, he posted this, and this was something else that Dallas Goddard said. Uh, Pound Eagles tight end Dallas Goddard tells part of my take that opposing defenses hated the way the Eagles used the quarterback last year. He said, quote, oh, they hated it every time. They called us. Earmuffs for you young people. Mute it real quick because I got to say the word because he said it. Uh, they called us pussies, called us soft. Tell us, quote, run a real play, and we're like, well, don't give us third, fourth, and one. Uh, I don't know how you do stop it. And that's the thing. The NFL can't stop it. That's why the players cry like babies. That's why the other teams tried to change rules. I've never seen where, it, where a league, a whole league says, well, we can't stop it. It's impossible. We can't stop it, so let's change the rules. That's the most defeated attitude ever. Uh, here's the thing. Teams can't stop it, and most teams can't replicate it. So they want to get rid of it. And I think it's absolutely hysterical. Now, if you're on the Eagles, you're going to love the play. If you if you have to go up against it, you're going to hate it. Uh, even Buda Baker. Buda Baker had a comment about, about that whole play. And Buda Baker's lurking. He's, he's, he's quietly waiting back, hoping the Eagles do something. He's making sure he says nice things. I'm telling you. But here's what he said. I remember almost killing myself the two times they... Uh, did, the, did this to the Cardinals last year. I was a post player trying to shoot the A-gap because uh, a third and fourth and one because everyone knew what we, they were going to do. I got my ass trampled both times and they converted. No fear though, not smart of me neither, but A, I wanted to win. So he's talking about what happened when the Eagles played played them and they did it. Um, but he kind of kind of was like, you know, hey, I get it. I understand it. And uh, I think Buda Baker wants to come to Philly. I definitely do. And I think something will happen with a player. The ma it's just a matter of who that player is going to be. Uh, the way I see it, Howie Roseman, he's already, he already lets the league know. Uh, you won't even see me coming when I make my move. And you know what? Jody McDonald of Jacob Sports. Shout out to Jody McDonald. Shout out to Jacob Sports. But he said this. I got a feeling that something's going to happen here in the next couple of days with the Eagles. Absolutely something is going to happen. It may be during camp. It may be during preseason. But how he's got a plan. He's got a plan. And usually it's the people we don't think about. We don't even realize is is out there for trade. Think of Jay Ajayi, what happened to him, right? Uh, that was a total surprise. Uh, that's how Howie Roseman usually works. But there is one guy I think we got to keep our eye on. There's one guy because there is a slight whisper out into the wind, out into the world. There's a slight whisper of a guy who possibly be, could, could be on the move and nobody really is talking about it or knows about it right now. But th that guy is Jeremy Chin. And why is Jeremy Chin potentially a possibility for the Eagles? For a few reasons. One, you have Frank Reich there now, right? So Reich's Eagles relationship is pretty good. Um, two, the, car the, the Panthers are kind of rebuilding. They're kind of looking at building for the future. His rookie contract is up after this year. And uh, they're going to have to pay him big money. They may not want to do that. The perfect time to trade them for the parent for the Panthers for a team building for the future is right now. It is right now. And uh the other thing you have to remember is that the Eagles scouting group, they were split. They were split in the front office on whether they should take Jeremy Chin or Jalen Hurts. So the Eagles already have it built in that they scouted the kid, that they liked the kid, and uh there's a chance. There's the articles. Uh, there was an article that said Eagles should quote pounce on potential starter trade uh, in this scenario, and 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 basically they're talking about about Jeremy Chin. Okay, and uh, this was first brought up I think about uh, maybe a week ago or so um, by Zach Berman of the Athletic. He said this. Um, the Athletic Zach Berman brought up Chin during a radio appearance on 97.5 The Fanatic. The six foot three, two hundred twenty pounder is a tweener, a player who could play safety or linebacker. "Quote: Jeremy Chin makes a lot of sense with the new coaching staff because they've added safety theirs." Berman said they are trying to figure out 
he's a small linebacker or if he's a bigger safety. He's in the last year of his contract, so it's similar to the C.J. Garner-Johnson um, in that regard. If he becomes available, that's a player I would pounce on. And, and, and he's absolutely right. If you have three chins in the back of my head hitting the wall, but if you have an opportunity to get Jeremy Chin, I, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be honest with you, I would take Jeremy Chin before I would take Buda Baker. I would, and and the reason is he he's younger. He's younger. Uh, Chin, six foot three, two twenty, twenty five years old, fifty one solo tackles, uh, fifty one solo tackles last year. Uh, we know that the Eagles really like this kid, and listen. You could move him all around safety, put him at linebacker in certain positions and certain situations. I'm totally okay with it. I think Jeremy Chin is a name you got to watch out for. That's the total Howie Roseman move. They have safeties. They, have, they, 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 they may be looking to get rid of him. They've brought in safeties, as uh, Zach Berman said. But the Eagles, were they were this close to getting him. They were a Mark Holmes from getting him before they went with Jalen Hurts, which was the right move, by the way. But... If given the opportunity, I think he's the guy you got to watch. Now, he may be more of a guy. See, I think if you trade Jeremy Chin, if the Panthers are going to trade, I would say maybe at the trade deadline, but more than likely, it's going to be a C.J. Garner-Johnson situation. Uh, it's going to be during training camp, you know, a team's going to try to get rid of him and get something for him. I, th I think the Eagles will do another C.J. Gardner-Johnson situation. I think Jeremy Chin is a name that we better keep an eye on because I actually think that's a legitimate possibility if the whispers in the wind are true that they are really shopping him. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's Howie Vision. We're all just living in it. So let me just apologize for the lateness of this video. It came out uh, a lot later than I wanted it to. It's just been a busy day. I've been up since 5 o'clock this morning, and I haven't stopped moving till I came home. I came. I had a brief lunch, came home. I had a little meeting for that behind-the-scene type thing for the channel. And then um, it's just been crazy nonstop. So I'm sorry that this is late. Um, now, after I post this, I got to go basically work outside in the dark. I'm getting ready to like landscape my whole backyard and stuff because when they build these houses here where I move, they didn't put anything in the backyards and these backyards are small. It's not like the East Coast, totally different. So I want to get I want to get it done this summer and that's my plan. But in order to get it, I have to get some work around the house and, and the outside done. So that's where I'm going to be for the next few hours once I post this video. So if I don't respond right away, that's why I'm, I'm out there busting my butt and it, it is what it is. Uh, with that said, Denzel Washington out.